What's up everyone and welcome to the Draft Dynasty channel. In today's episode we're gonna go over Alexander Holtz, one of the best sniper from the draft this year. He's an elite sniper and he was one of the most highly requested in the comment in my last video. And before we start this video, I just want to say a quick thank you to all the new subscribers. I guess with uh, everyone staying at home, people have more free time and I gain a lot of new subscribers. So thank you everyone. I hope I'm going to be able to entertain you. And until we get to the draft, I will be posting two scouting reports like this one per week. All right, let's start this. So let's take a look at his profile in Elite Prospect. So he's six foot, 183 pound. One thing that I can say, I saw him play in July in the Summer Showcase and he looked way smaller than that. So I'm guessing he gained a lot of weight, maybe 10 pound, I would say, because he looked fairly small physically. And uh, the game I've watched uh, toward the, the end of the year, he looked way bigger, way stronger. So I'm guessing he hit the gym during the season because uh, he improved a lot physically. Uh, now if we take a look at his stat, uh, pretty impressive track record. Just look at all the international games he had. It's very impressive for a guy only 18 years old. If you look at the goal scoring last year, 30 goal and 38 game. Very impressive in the Super Elite for a draft minus one player. Uh, this year as well, nine goal in the SHL, the best league in Sweden, probably the second or third best league in the world. And he also did really well at the World Junior Under 20 Championship, 5.3 goal in seven game. Uh, that's excellent for a guy in his draft year. Let's compare against other forward from the SHL in their draft year. As always, I put a minimum of 10 game the last 20 years and I rank by point per game and he is fifth. Uh, you can see there's just ahead of him Niklas Backstrom, Mika Zibanejad slightly below him. We can rank only the NHL player. Maybe it's going to be easier to see. So those are all the players that played in the NHL. So you have William Nylander here as well as Jakob Vrana over here, Alexander Steen. So if you compare, there's quite a, a few players that played in the NHL and is ranking really well versus those players. Let's start this thing. Let's roll some clips. He's going to be the number 88 when he's playing in the SHL and number 10 when he's in international play or in the Super Elite League. And we're going to start with the thing I like the most about his game. For him, super easy. He's got a nasty shot. He's a goal scorer, natural goal scorer. What I like the most about his shot, I would say... Uh, he has a quick release first. He's also all he's always ready to shoot. This is something I like about him. He always has two hands on his stick and he's ready at all time. If a loose box comes his way, he's gonna be ready to shoot it really quickly. Quick release. He's also very good to shoot while in movement. So he's someone that's gonna be able to score in transition uh, whenever he's at top speed. He's not just gonna be a scorer on the power play when he's flat footed. Uh, he's gonna be able to do it all. One other thing that I noticed with his shot is that a lot of the goal that he scored, he actually hit the inside post. So whenever you see a guy, a goal scorer, that a lot of his goal are coming from the post, hitting the inside post, this is a good sign that the guy is extremely accurate and he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's able to place the puck exactly where he wants it to be. If I had to compare his shot with last year's draft, I think Caulfield was one of the best shooters from last year. And I think I would give the edge to Alexander Oates simply because his shot is more well-rounded. Caulfield is more about purely accuracy. He's a, more of a flat foot shooter. While Oates is better, I think, in movement. And he also has a bit more power behind his shot. For all those reasons, I think if everything goes as planned, He's going to become one of the best goal scorer in the NHL. At least in two or three years, we can expect him to score 30 goals easily. Uh, he's going to be deadly on the power play as well. Alexander Holtz, 17-åringen. Wow. 
Let's transition to the second thing I like the most about his game. And this is something maybe earlier in the year that I was not overly impressed with. But the more I watch him uh, throughout the year in the SHL, I start to notice his skating is really good. If I had to describe his skating ability, I would say that the what comes to mind is that it's super well-rounded. Because you always have players that are either super agile, other that are more acceleration and other top speed and powerful skater with him. He kind of give you a bit of everything. So all the aspect agility, top speed acceleration it's all good but what makes it even better it's that is consistency he has a great motor and usually you're gonna see scorer that are gonna take shift off they're gonna be a bit slower not always at full speed but with alexander Oltz, it's a little bit different than your usual goal scorer because he gives you great work ethic intensity he's always moving his feet so in the end i think in the long run maybe he's not gonna be as streaky as some goal scorer or he's gonna be more consistent in his effort and his production and I don't think he's going to have that many bad games. I just want to circle back to that subject because I think we can easily make mistake with that when we evaluate a player. And let's say we have two players. So player A uh, is an 8 out of 10 in skating, but excellent work ethic, 10 out of 10 intensity, consistency is a 10 out of 10. And you have player B where he's an elite skater, but he is pretty lazy. So intensity level is not really there. So in the end, it's very possible that player A, who is the worst skater out of the two, is actually the more productive, more efficient skater out of the two just because he has the intensity to go with it and this goes for everything it's not just skating it's really this can be the shot as well if the guy has a, an amazing shot but he's never able to get open he rarely shoot to the net doesn't have scoring instinct i'm sure you get the point but this was a really long way to say that he might not be an elite skater but with his intensity i think he's really close to be as effective as an elite skater let's switch to a different category this time we're going to take a look at his playmaking ability and his vision of course he's more of a goal scorer he has the mentality he likes to shoot the puck he likes to score goal uh, i don't know if you remember alex ovechkin when he was younger every time he scored he was celebrating like he won the stanley cup it's a bit the same with him i can tell that he liked to score and he's a goal scorer there's a clip that you could hear him scream at his teammate he wanted the puck he want he likes to shoot it he wants to be the difference maker and if you look at all the great scorer in the nhl most of them are really happy when they score they always think about scoring and it's the same with him he has the goal scoring mentality but let's get back to his vision he has a pretty good one of course it's not an elite playmaker but i think he's gonna get a lot of assists just simply by shooting the puck and getting rebound <laughs> For the next clips, I'm going to show you a few of his shot on goal. And this maybe is one thing that he could improve. His shot selection sometimes is not good. There's a, a, a lot of shots that I can tell uh, straight up that are not good. That he should have tried to look for a pass or just keep the puck and uh, try to get in better position to shoot. Especially at the pro level, the, the goalies are much better. And as some of his, the shot he took, he has almost zero chance to score. And speaking of NHL, I guess I'm going to go with my NHL comparison while we're at it. And with him, I find it pretty difficult to find a comparable player in the NHL there's not really a player similar to him if you had to force my hand I would say maybe a guy like Steven Stemkos or Mika Zibanejad player like that guys that like to score that are good shooter and in terms of projection I see him as a 35 40 goal scorer top line player he's gonna be able to play on the top line very good and dangerous on the power play at five on five I think he might be a little bit of a liability defensively but not that much uh, right now he's having difficulty a little bit in the SHL positioning is a bit of an issue sometime but it, the work ethic is good so i think he's going to be able to figure it out to be at least decent at five on five Another hot topic is the comparison between Oltz and Raymond since they're both coming from Sweden and rank around the same range in the, the draft. So I'm going to give my two cents about those two. So let's start with their player type. So Raymond is more of a playmaker. He, he makes the people around him better while 
Alexander Holtz is more of the finisher, the goal scorer. So they're completely different on that level. In terms of pure skills and ability, natural gifted talent, I would give the edge slightly to Raymond. I think uh, if he hit the, you hit the jackpot and he hit his full potential, he's going to be better than Alexander Holtz. On the other end, if you look at the floor, so if both player hit uh, the worst case scenario, they don't turn out to be the player as we expect them to be. Uh, I think the floor is higher for ex Alexander Holtz. So he's a bit safer in that regard. At the beginning of the year, the game I've watched, clearly Raymond for me was ahead of Holtz. But I think once they made the switch to the SHL, the pro level in Sweden, Alexander Holtz had an easier time making the transition from junior to pro level. And I think most of it is because of the physicality. He became much stronger physically and he was better prepared to adapt to the physicality of the pro level, the strength of the player. Whereas Raymond is still a bit undersized, still struggle a little bit to adjust to the physicality of the game and because Alexander Holt improved at a faster rate than Raymond and he had an easier time ad adapting to the SHL I think he's gonna have an easier time reaching his full potential well this comparison took way too much time I was not planning on spending that much time on that to cut this short I'm gonna have Holt ahead of Raymond probably in the range 5 or 6 7 in that range slightly ahead of Lucas Raymond and to finish the video I still have a few clips of his stick and link got some pretty good ends and for the next episode i'm probably gonna drop one on saturday morning I'm gonna start a little mini series about hidden prospect underrated prospect so player that are not necessarily going to go first round but are still very uh, interesting prospect that are maybe not getting enough attention you can try to guess in the comment below the name of the player and if someone gets it i'm gonna pin the comment so go take a look uh, in the comment uh, below the video maybe someone is gonna get it as always drop a like if you enjoy that stuff and if if you're a draft nerds like me don't be scared to join the party join the crew let's have some fun and click on that little subscribe button anyways guys i'm out take care everyone and don't forget to take a look on the channel saturday i should have another one of these bye